What is bridge resource management? It is the effective management and utilization of all resources, human and technical, available to the bridge team to ensure the safe completion of the vessel's voyage. It is also called bridge team management. Traits of bridge team. Teamwork. Team building. Effective communication. Decision making. Leadership. Resource management. Basic principles of BRM. It addresses the management of operational tasks, as well as stress, attitudes, and risk. It recognizes that there are many elements of job effectiveness and safety, such as individual, organizational, and regulatory factors, and they must be anticipated and planned for. It begins before the voyage with the passage plan and continues through the end of the voyage with the passage debrief. What are the available resources to manage? Electronic equipment such as radar, depth sounder, GPS, ARPA, gyro compass, charts and publications, including electronic publications, environmental factors, tide, wind, currents, electronic charting and display information systems, vessel traffic services, passage plan, internal and external communication equipment, navtex, automatic identification system. Persons with local knowledge such as the pilot. Bridge personnel such as the master, officer on watch, helmsman, lookout. What are the objectives of bridge resource management? Share a common view of the intended passage and the agreed procedures to transit the passage with all members of the bridge team. Develop and use a detailed passage plan to anticipate and manage workload demands and risks. Set appropriate manning levels and make contingency plans based on anticipated workload and risks. Make roles and responsibilities clear to bridge team members. Involve all team members in problem solving. Acquire all relevant information early and anticipate dangerous situations. Team members clearly understand the chain of command including the way decisions and instructions are made, responded to, and challenged. How do I implement bridge resource management on MY vessel? 1. Passage planning. Covering Ocean coastal and pelotage waters. Particular attention is paid to high traffic areas, shallow waters, or pelotage waters where the plan incorporates appropriate margins of safety and contingency plans for unexpected incidents. 2. Passage plan briefing. All bridge team members are briefed on the passage plan and understand the intended route and procedures to transit the route. 3. Bridge Manning Master uses passage plan to anticipate areas of high workload and risk and sets manning levels appropriately. 4. Bridge team training ashore and on the job it is given to all bridge crew members and they are sure of their roles and responsibilities, both for their routine duties and their duties in the event of an incident or emergency. 5. Master Standing Orders These documents are read and signed before the commencement of the voyage. Orders are clear on the chain of command, how decision and instructions are given on the bridge and responded to and how bridge team members bring safety concerns to the notice of the master. 6. Master-Pilot Exchange The passage plan is discussed by the master and the pilot and changes made as necessary. Any new information is communicated to the rest of the bridge team. When the pilot is on board, he she should be supported as a temporary bridge team member. 7. End of Voyage Debriefing It provides the opportunity for the bridge team to review the passage plan strengths and weaknesses, make suggestions for improved safety or communications, and improve team problem-solving skills. What are the benefits of BRAM when correctly practiced on MY vessel? Maintains its situational awareness. Continually monitors the progress of the vessel making appropriate adjustments and corrections as necessary to maintain a safe passage. Acquires relevant information early. 
appropriately delegates workload and authority. Anticipates dangerous situations. Avoids becoming preoccupied with minor technical problems and losing sight of the big picture. Undertakes appropriate contingency plans when called for. Recognizes the development of an error chain and takes appropriate action to break the error chain sequence. Factors affecting human error. 1. Experience work-related experience or learning from somebody's error. 2. Education training to curricular activities of individuals. 3. Emotions combination of experience and education. 4. Panic. 5. Confusion. 6. Excitement. Error chain indicator. Ambiguity. Distraction. Inadequacy and confusion. Communication breakdown. Improper conning. Non-compliance of the plan. Procedural violation. What is communication? It is an act comprises of exchanging information by many ways of transmitting and receiving it. It is the exchange and flow of information and ideas from one person to another. It involves a sender transmitting an idea, information, or feeling to a receiver. Closed-loop communications It is a communication technique used to avoid misunderstandings. It reduces the chances of errors in an organization because it is more efficient. Ideally, the sender and receiver must confirm that the message was successfully communicated. This is the best way to ensure that the right message is sent. It is also important to note that it is impossible to fully convey the information without confirming that it was received. Barriers of Communications 1. Physical Barrier 2. Attitude 3. Language 4. Physiological obstacle. 5. Problems with structure design. 6. Cultural noise. 7. Info overload. 8. Lack of common experience. 9. Jumping to conclusion. What is leadership? A leader is one who inspires and motivates action. Having a can-do personality and strong leadership skills is the key to leading the charge. Basis of a leader 1. Seniority 2. IG gap. 3. Status 4. Money. 5. Popularity. Situational leadership. Delegating. Low supportive and low directive behavior. Supporting. High supportive and low directive behavior. Coaching. High directive and high supportive behavior. Directing. High directive and low supportive behavior. It is a leadership style that has been developed and studied by Kenneth Blanchard and Paul Hersey. This refers to when the leader or manager of an organization must adjust his style to fit the development level of the followers he is trying to influence. It is up to the leader to change his style, not the follower to adapt to the leader's style. The style may change continually to meet the needs of others in the organization based on the situation. Different leadership style Snail Low on performance, low on people style characteristics Set standards too low Poor communicator 
no authority. Tager. High on performance, low on people style characteristics. Authoritarian style. One way communicator. Limits challenges. Strong leader, good in a crisis. One man ban. Effect of this style. Quiet, defensive team members. Poor communication and few challenges. Decrease in performance. High morale. Penguin. Low on performance, high on people style characteristics. Uses too much unimportant communication. Challenge and response unbalanced. Mistake forgiven. Lower standards accepted. Trust people, give them responsibility. Effects of this style. General lowering of professional standards. Low morale. Low respect for leadership. Team members may grow and improve their skills. Sheep. Middle on performance, middle on people style characteristics. Reasonable communication. Challenges accepted. Short-term strategies used. Dolphin. High on performance, high on people style characteristics. Have good communication skills. Accepts challenges. Uses short-term strategy. What is motivation? It is commonly defined as what explains why people or animals initiate, continue or terminate a certain behavior at a particular time. It is defined as the most significant predictor of success of a person. A person could be motivated intrinsically or extrinsically. Intrinsic motivation. If the activity is desired because it is inherently interesting or enjoyable, pursuing challenges and goals comes easier and is more enjoyable when one is intrinsically motivated to complete a certain objective. This tends to be more long lasting, self sustaining, and satisfying. Extrinsic motivation. If the agent's goal is an external reward distinct from the activity itself, occurs when an individual is driven by external influences. This can be either rewarding, money, good grades, fame, etc., or punishing, threat of punishment, pain, etc. What is assertiveness? This refers to the quality of being self-assured and confident without being aggressive. In the field of psychology and psychotherapy, it is a learnable skill and mode of communication. Relationship between assertiveness and leadership. Secrets of successfully assertive leaders. Connect and communicate with everyone. Give honest feedback in a helpful way. Use good judgment to make decisions. Walk your talk. Maintain excellent relationships. Look for opportunities to collaborate. Understanding challenge and response. Challenge meant some unpredictable factor or event that posed a threat to the ways in which a group of people are accustomed to. But challenge was not all negative. It carried in it an opportunity. Response was the action taken by the same group of people to cope with the new situation. A challenge would arise as the result of many things. Response required vision, leadership, and action to overcome the threat and create a basis for survival and, hopefully, prosperity. Albert Toynbee, Cambridge University you should be ready to accept and consider reasonable challenges from other members of the bridge team. Equally, be alert to what is going on and be prepared to speak up if you spot an error. Constructive criticism is a key factor in establishing a supportive working environment. The approach of the team is highly considered when CA or principle happens within the team. Situational awareness. This is the ability to identify, process, and comprehend the critical elements of information about what is happening to the team with regards to the mission. 
More simply, it's knowing what is going on around you. Levels of situational awareness. Perceiving. Relevant information depends on access to information and recognizing this information. Communications and visualization of information are crucial to ensuring this step is possible. Understanding. Comprehending relevant information is key to dealing with the information properly. Mental models help understand information, but their validity depends on information completeness. Predicting. The information received and understood helps predict future outcomes. Complex systems make prediction difficult, flawed mental models influence wrong assumptions. Constant re-evaluation and